into today's episode, let's hear a quick word about our sponsor. In today's fast-paced world, having the right connection is more important than ever. Whether it's a personal relationship, a business partnership, or a mechanical fastener, the right connection can make all the difference. When it comes to mechanical fasteners, a weak or unreliable connection can lead to costly downtime, safety hazards, and even catastrophic failure. Stay Fast Products Inc. understands the importance of the right connection. That's why they offer a wide range of fastening solutions that are designed to provide the strength, durability, and reliability that you need. So don't settle for a weak or unreliable connection. Choose the right fastener for the job, the right people for your life, and experience the peace of mind that comes with knowing that your connections are strong and secure. So don't settle for a weak or unreliable connection. Choose the right fastener for the job, the right people for your life, and experience the peace of mind that comes with knowing that your connections are strong and secure. Stafe has privilege to serve their customers with the right connection. I'm gonna have this on my phone forever. <laughs> Can you put it on, Gabe? Bro? <laughs> tell us, tell us about what you just found. So I just found a great new app. <laughs> help all my, <laughs> help all my people out. <laughs> the app is called Nigga Food. <laughs> it's called what? <laughs> it's called Nigga Food. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> but what is it about? It's a food app. For shopping. Four point seven stars, people. Oh, it's uh, it's it's uh, it's it's Hispanic. Oh, I love this. It's what? Says, it's in it's in Espanol. All right, now there's a question mark. Look, it what says nigga food is a life changing. <laughs> <laughs> it just stops. Wait a minute. No, wait it's a minute. It's by the Hispanics. Oh, oh, that actually, that, that's, that's a good question. Crazy. Oh, oh listen. I know where so you're listen, going. I know where I'm going. Let's I know it. where you're going. So, let's do it. Can Hispanic people say the N word? I vote absolutely not. Thoughts? You don't have a thought, I but I can't. you guys. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I don't have a problem with it necessarily. I just I don't care too much about about it for Mexicans to say it. I just know she can't. And boy said Mexicans, <laughs> Hispanics, not just Mexicans. Come on, PR. Hispanics. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, shout out to my Hispanics. <laughs> Oh, never mind. Let me not. Oh, shoot. Um. <sighs> Everybody can say the N-word. And also, nobody can say the N-word. I'm, I'm of the belief that I'm not going to police anybody because that would require energy. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, um, you should really just... You know, search your heart, man. <laughs> Should I be saying this? <laughs> so here's actually a better question. Not so much can, because you're right. Anybody can say whatever they want, technically, for mm-hmm. country. It's more like, should you? Like, from a moral, moral perspective, should a Hispanic person be given the N-word pass? Now, can I, can I bring up something that I wanted to bring up with the cuss word thing as well? Mm. Because... I feel like it is the same as how I view cuss words. I use both, me personally. But sometimes when I hear other people, it makes me uncomfortable. But not all the time. Okay, so what context? Like, well, I don't want to snitch now. but <laughs> No, snitch. It's somebody, somebody that I be hearing cuss, and it, like, I, like, I, it just sounds like venom. And it's like it's like, oh, what does what does he got going on inside to make him speak like this? But like, I've heard each of you cuss and myself as well. And in the context that we've done it, 
it's not it doesn't affect me like that. But like someone else, just depending on the context, I'll hear it and I'll be like, ugh, like it'll make me cringe. Same with the N-word. Like certain people will say it and I'll just be like, yeah, it just didn't sound right coming out of your mouth, you mm-hmm. know? Like even if a black person say it and it just sound a certain way, I'll be like, oh, I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. I ain't gonna lie. Like, like it has some Jim Crow in the back. Yeah, Jim Crow. It might <laughs> Uncle be uh, Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus, yeah. Like I could picture Will Smith saying it on the Fresh Prince, but not Carlton. Precisely. Indeed. Mm. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know that this was like a debate until I started working at Amazon the first time, or the only time. But when I started working at Amazon, and I remember I was like packing next to this one Hispanic guy, and you know he was packing and stuff, and he was like. Yeah, you know, this is my uh, my third week here. And then he was like, you know, all these niggas here, they blah, blah, blah. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I, 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 literally said, I literally said, whoa, whoa, what? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, you know, these niggas here, you know, they... I'm like... <laughs> I literally walked away because I was like, I feel like he should not be allowed to say that. <laughs> and then, like, as I kept working there, I would hear more Hispanic people say that as if it was, like, it's okay. Mm-hmm. It's part of their, like, lingo. And then it started making me like think like, oh, this is like part of their that brand of that brand. That brand. That was like part of their culture. Because those specific people, when I would talk to them and stuff, a lot of their backgrounds was like, if you live in Cleveland, like they were like West Siders, like they lived in like they lived around more like black people. So mm-hmm. they thought that like they were allowed to say it. And then oh. like and not even that they were around black people, but just because they feel like they they experienced the same plates and the same struggles. As you black say people. place or plates, because that matters. Same what? You say place or plates? Pl- plight. Oh, plight. Plight. I thought. No, like they they experienced the same plights as black people. They think because if they experienced the same plate, no, they would have been like no, yeah. no, no. plight. But plight. So they right. think that they can like say it, and I was I was not a fan. Yes. I know. What does Struggles that mean? and whatnot. Learn something new every day. Yeah. But obviously they don't. Like they deal with a whole uh a bunch of other problems that we don't. But we deal with a lot of problems that they don't. So I feel like they should not be allowed to say it. Not 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 be allowed because anybody can do what they want, but like I f- just feel like they shouldn't. I feel like should not be in their vocabulary. And here's another reason why. Like, well, so Jane the Virgin, right? Great show. And um, the main actress, what's her name? Gina Rodriguez or something? Right? I, know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. So basically, she like was, she was uh, under fire from the woke uh, police because she like, she was like in an interview basically and then, you know. The person was interviewing her and what's the girl's name from Blackish? One with the nice hair. Viara? Yeah, it starts with the Y. And they were like interviewing them about like representing women and then they asked the one with the Y name, the black one, asked her, How does it feel representing uh like African American girls or something? And then Gina popped in, she was like, Actually, all girls and then they're like, No, no. Black girl specifically, and then she just got like under fire for like. Saying That's not that. what I thought you were gonna talk about. What were you gonna talk about when she said that? Word? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that I mean, was another situation. So like it was like piled on situation with her like saying stuff that was so like pro Hispanic culture, but but also which is not a problem, but also anti Black culture, and just like it wasn't good. And it see, was just I didn't, commentary. I didn't care when she said that. I mean, like it didn't like affect me in any way i didn't i just oh she said it people are like to uh, like blasting her on ig and social media like I, I feel like we care about the wrong stuff sometimes like it didn't matter to me mm. me i feel like i would honestly be like personally offended i'm not the person i'm not like the type who will be like crying about something or be like you shouldn't say this blah 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 but like I will, like, as soon as someone would say that, that I feel like it shouldn't come out of your mouth, I automatically, like, in my mind, I'm just like, oh, 
that's who you are. I, you <laughs> Caught it. Nice. Uh, I just wanted to pull up Marlon Wayne's take on the N-word real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard it? It's perfect. It's perfect. We got beef. Perfect. It's perfect. That's awesome. No, no, yeah. It's not regional? Or no, wait. It's not universal. It's not universal. It is regional. Yeah, just because you and your homeboys from where you grew up, you know, they let you slide. I don't know you, bro. You got to get acclimated first before you just be like, nah, nah, it's cool. You telling me it's cool. Yeah, all right. Yeah. But once again, I'm not going to police it. I just wouldn't want to be around you because it's like, you weird to me. No. I guess I'm like, I'm the one who has the stronger, like, take. I guess you guys seem a little more relaxed. Well, it's because it gives people power over you. That's true. If you like, have to react mm. or be like, hey, hey, hey. You well, I'm not say saying that. that like me personally that I would react. I'm just saying like I would, I would like assume something, kind of like, right away. Or, or like you say, like I, it would make me feel uncomfortable, so I'd just be like, "All right, like, no thanks." And I had to like adjust myself to be this way, cause like, in high school, were you there when I had to? Uh, <laughs> I, I thought, I thought I had to uh, defend the word pretty much, you know. So like, I was, uh, I was smacking folks up. <laughs> Were you in the car? Was this, wait, was this when you threw the banana at somebody? Or was that something different? What? <laughs> like, no, I like a banana. <laughs> hey, yo, that story ain't got nothing to do with me. I don't know. No, that what is a, that's next about? level racism. Uh, I, I think it's something else. <laughs> I have to tell you. <laughs> I don't know what he's No, you got to say it now, bro. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, what's that story? That's way better than what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, there was this kid <laughs> and. I forget what it was, but he he like called somebody a monkey and I threw a banana at him. That's it. <laughs> he called someone a monkey and then threw a banana at him. No, I threw a no, banana threw at him. him because he called that dude a monkey. Oh, okay. Well, that's short and sweet. Okay. But <laughs> no, like we, I could have sworn Gabe was there, but I don't know. But like basically, back in like high school, whenever like a white person would say the n word, I would just I would just smack him like you. Yeah, you yeah, were there. Yeah, I knew yeah. you were there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. I missed that. But it's like, it doesn't matter. But it's like, I'm an adult now. So, like, I can go to jail if I do that. Yeah. So, it's like, I had to really just, within myself, just ask, does this really, like, matter? Like, does this really affect me directly? Mm. No. Exactly. And it's like, it doesn't excuse it. It doesn't mean that it's okay or that they should be doing it. But I'm not going to lose my self-control and, like, Feel like I have to cause someone physical harm over yeah. it, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, that's like what the Boondocks said. That's a nigga moment. Mm-hmm. You don't want to cause one of those. True. So you true. can get you in jail or shot or something. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Mm-hmm. I've only ever had to check one person in my life about using it, and it was weird because they said it was their favorite word, <laughs> and but it, their fa- their favorite word was the hard R version of nigga. Huh? Yeah. They Who said, was this nigga? Oh, yeah. The hard R. Why was that her favorite word? Like, I'm just imagining this play out. I'm like, yo, you gotta chill out on this. In what context? She, she, it was her favorite word. Yo, I'm just like, sometimes you just can't make this stuff up. Like, what? Where'd you learn that from? Yeah, I asked myself that question. Mm hmm. You know, and yeah, yeah, yeah. If she was comfortable doing that, 
Around you. What did folks have going on when you wasn't there? Mm. Good question. I was going to say, like, this whole conversation and, like, people who are that ignorant to, like, say something like that just reminds me of how stupid, like, prejudice and racism really is. Like, to have that much energy to just, like, like to waste so much energy on, like, hating someone or, like, belittling somebody just because of their ethnic background, it's just stupid. Like, why do we do that? Shout out, Gabby. Ending racism. Dr. Omar, <laughs> he would not be proud. What? You, what? Huh? <laughs> Dr. Omar would not be proud. <laughs> you an idiot, though. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. Gabe, what is your take on interracial relationships? <clears throat> um, relationship between a man and a woman. About. Should not be like looked down upon because they have different cultural and ethnic backgrounds. I had to make sure I said man and woman because I can't just say love is love because that could just go left. <laughs> left. I see what you did there. <laughs> that boy, good. You guys? Yeah, me personally, I hate white women like with a passion. So. <laughs> Good one. I was there for it. What did I say? Stop. He was like, Amen, brother. Um no, nah, um, I, I don't know if I told this on the podcast, but I've definitely told you guys how uh when I when I started my college years, right, and I had entered into the, the wide world of women outside of Cornerstone, the Cornerstone Bowl, mm-hmm. I was like, There's absolutely no way that I'm about to settle. Mm-hmm. For a white woman, Damn. because I got all these other options. And then when I start working at Amazon, and I actually start building some confidence to like He's too be able excited. To, to talk <laughs> to other people and start realizing that they'll talk back, I was like, oh shoot, it's a whole different world. And I started developing, honestly, started developing like a tiny bit of play the music racial bias against anyone who. Yeah. Uh, wasn't black i was like thinking like oh this is gonna be too much work to try to deal with like marrying someone from a different culture raising kids like i didn't even want to think about that and then also my extended family is also extremely prejudiced towards white people so i was like ain't no way that i'm about to and like do that and get ridiculed and looked down upon by my family because like I've said, my extended family is very, very, very pro, pro blackity black, black. So there is just, there was just no way. And I'll give you two instances on how I knew that my family was really against it. So therefore, I was like, no way I'm going to put myself through that. I was uh, at one of my cousin's graduation, and I was like standing outside with my younger cousin, who's like, who at the time was like a freshman or a sophomore in high school. And then my great uncle who was like close to 60 or something he was like hey brother i know you just got in the uh high school talking to my younger one he was like i know you just got into high school bro and you over there in a kind of a rich school so i just want you to know stay away from the snow bunnies do not mess with a snow bunny get you a black queen only okay and then he was like uh, the voice the voice <laughs> yeah he was like all right and then he dapped him up and then they had a moment and I was like, the moment. oh, this is how this rolls. And then I told her this all the time. When we used to do big extended Thanksgivings, <laughs> uh, one of my great uncles married a white woman and has multiple kids who are mixed. And literally every year for like three, four years that we had this, they would come into the house and then my all like my other uncles would be like, as soon as they came in and they see the kids, they'd be like, "Who the white baby is that?" Dang. And be so like serious. That's messed up, bro. And like over time, I was just like, they really like don't mess with that. 
And I'll give you one other one. I don't know if I ever told you this, but one time, uh, one of my it was that same uncle who like married a white woman, and um, like one of their kids is like kind of like they're just they they need to find the Lord. Mm. So let's pray for them. Uh, but literally, my great my great aunt was like, you know, one of my great aunts. She was like, you know, I don't I know that uh, you know my son struggles so much with his kids because. You know, he's so sad that they're always doing this, that, whatever. I don't know if it's because his, his wife is white or something. And I was like, huh? Because and, I, and it was just like, it was just weird. And over time, like, obviously, eventually I met this wonderful woman here that cured my heart mm. from prejudice and bias. The and cure. I realized that... Uh, the girl. <laughs> <laughs> and I realized that uh, racism, prejudice, and following in that generational curse is not kingdom-minded. And that, like, the kingdom's going to be diverse, so forget it. And also, racism is stupid. I'm which, glad you yeah. I'm glad you called it a generational curse. Yeah. that's what it is. No, it is. And then now I, like, I, like view it, like, completely different. Because I'm, like, the fact that I almost, like, kept in that same mindset with myself... That would have passed down to my kids, so then my kids would grow up, and I would like basically condition them like you can't look at other cultures at all, like you can't get close to them, you can't trust them, you can't like not just white people but any other culture. And I would have just continued that same, you know, non-progressive uh, view. Well, not only your kids, but that would have affected you. Like you almost missed out on your wife if you were thinking Facts. like like that, bro. That would have been checkers. Facts. Handicap. Facts. Mm-hmm. And like, you know, and we've talked about this a lot. Like, yeah, there still is a, there's always like a question mark with how you're going to blend like culture and you're going to blend like all these different traditions. But like, it, it would have been the same with someone who's your same race. Just because you guys have the same color of skin doesn't mean that you're going to have the exact same family uh, situation growing up. You're still going to have to b- blend two families together. So really like, what really is the difference? Like, it's literally just your skin color. It's just a bad, it's just like a stupid way to look at things, in my opinion. So, yeah. I don't know. I just hate, like, the negative views that people have, like, on, on both sides of, like, interracial couples. Because, like, I don't know. The assumption is that, like, you hate black women. You don't hate black women. Like, or that, like, what? Yes, come I'm on, sorry. bro. Keep going, like, keep going. Anyway, I'll I just sit like this. I just like why can't like two people just a man and a woman, come Gabe? <laughs> that in today's culture, Gabriel, love each other. Like it doesn't ha- like we in America make everything so like based on color, and it doesn't need to be that way. And me personally, like you're talking about, like all this racism in your family that, like, you know, I didn't know about any type of racism in my family. Like, I thought we were all accepting and stuff. And then I tried to bring them to my family's house for Thanksgiving, and they were like, that won't fly. Mm-hmm. And I was hurt. And I was like, Not her parents, no, let no, me no, clarify. No, no. Not my them. parents, my parents love them, some yeah. DeAndre. Yeah. Just to clarify. They kind of like it more than me. Shout out. But. Big Mike. <laughs> 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 No, but like, oh, hey. No, but I had no idea. (laughs) Mexico, (laughs) your people. (laughs) That's crazy. (laughs) No, but in all seriousness, no. Continue. Yeah, no, like I had no idea that like this person in my family was racist. Like, and then like turns out he's so extremely racist, and I was like, dang, like was I ignorant to it this whole time, or did I like? I don't know, but. It's just how people are, and it's sad. It's a heart issue. I like it. Mic drop. True. No, you and me were just talking about this the other day because people think that I'm racist all the time because they think I have a bias towards one ethnic group of women. But the problem is I have been with a woman from like every race, except for like German. So, <laughs> 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 no, 
know what I'm trying to say. I love all people. <laughs> Look at my African American. Is he the greatest? No, but really though, I've had experiences. One, let me just wrap up on the part I was just talking about. One, folks will see me like with one girl and then just assume that whatever that girl is, that's the only type of girl I mess with, which doesn't make sense. Because if I've been with a girl that was like this, one like this, one like this, you're just seeing me at a particular moment in time, right? But also, with the women that I've brought home, I feel like, and I don't feel like any of my family is, like, racist, you know? But I definitely noticed a different energy when I brought home a woman that looked like this versus one that looked like that. And I don't, like I said, I don't think it's, like, a hateful type of thing. I think it was just, like, a uncomfortability thing. But I still feel like that maybe is a problem just because it says that there is some type of narrative in somebody's head on either side. So even if it's like a defensive narrative where it's like maybe this person views me this way, that shouldn't change your behavior, you know? Like you should just be yourself at all times is how I feel. But because either we view a different race as one way and so we treat them different or we think that they view us a certain way and so we act different around them, I think both are negative and not conducive. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that you said, like, uncomfortable. I think it's because, like, in America, like you were saying, we think of everything so, like, black-white. When, like, when Parrish was here and we are talking about his experience in Europe, like, it's so diverse. Mm -hmm. Like, people are not so like narrow-minded where they only think about their country their people group like people are so it's so easy to literally like drive to another country when you're in europe and then people like appreciate the cultures differently when you're exposed to more cultures and that's why like it's so true people say like oh you need to get out of the country like once you like leave the country and you see somewhere like other than here your worldview literally expands because you're seeing the world and I think that's something that we need to think about here in America, that the whole world is not just like here. And if you like keep yourself so narrow minded where you're literally not going to want to talk to, make friends with, not just like romantic relationships, but even like just build any type of relationship with someone who's not in your culture. If you're not willing to do that, like you're really missing out on the world. Amen. <laughs> there was this video I saw. Not too long ago by this YouTuber. It was pretty funny. He uh he went to the most racist town in America. And Oh, I think I yeah. saw this. It was hilarious because the, it was like this old white guy and this black dude, big black dude with like dreads. And he was and he was like dressed like he was Nelly back in oh four, oh five, right? And he's just hanging out with them down south and like He's like asking him, can we hang out? He was like, no, we can't ever hang out. Like, what if I came inside? I'd shoot you. Oh, like, what? And it's like, he's dead serious. Yeah. But it's like, you can see the comedy behind it. Mm. But then you can also, like, I didn't feel like, I don't know the word for it. Like, oppression maybe is the word for it. But it's like, I saw that video and it's just like, Wow. Some people are really racist, but I just find it so funny. Like, re like I don't know if this is bad to say, but like, racist jokes are be be hitting, bro. <laughs> they be just be hitting. I saw one though. No comments. <laughs> Not me. But yeah, no, it's like funny because it's it's funny because like it's so stupid. It's so stupid. Exactly. Yeah, like it's it's so like funny to believe that people actually believe those things. Yeah, and then but then it's not funny when it's people you know, and they're like, oh shoot. That's mm -hmm. how you are. It's not funny when it can affect something tangibly. Mm -hmm. Like, if someone can physically be harmed or, like, emotionally abused by it, it's not funny. But it's, like, just the concept of, like, like, racist people are, like, so stupid. So it's, like, just the concept of your dumbness. <laughs> it's just, it's funny. I get it. Are you all right there? Yeah, I'm looking at the door. 
Oh. Sorry. <laughs> Dang, bro. You good? Can you see it? Yeah, I'm just trying to see, like, a transition to a different, like, one of these romantic relationship topics, probably. Oh, Since have we not talked about anything on there yet? No. We just open. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. What? I still think we can hit Oh, yeah. Because they kind of, like... Because the off. nigga food. Nigga food. That was a great... That's the name of the episode. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel in charge? Actually, what you about to say them? Yeah, because I feel like the relationship stuff is gonna take another big chunk of this. That's what yeah. we're doing. But honestly, can we just do a quick like? Can we just go in order for a second, like, just like to hit some of these aliens? Yeah, bro. Can we talk about it? Project Bluebeam. <laughs> so, so I watched this video today. <laughs> I watched the YouTube video today. Where this guy in Mexico, again, your favorite people, um, this guy in Mexico like went in front of Congress and like showed these uh, these caskets allegedly of some alien bodies. You guys mm, see this? I've seen this. <laughs> They're small though. They were so small. It looks so like silly, and basically nobody took it seriously because they're like, "Bro, this is literally fake." <laughs> and yeah, so that was pretty much it. So I thought it was funny because. We, like we've been talking about aliens a lot, like in the media, because everybody's talking about UFOs, and the United States government allegedly said that, you know, they've confirmed UFOs or something. So like, thoughts? I feel like it's a distraction for something else, but well, this it's always a distraction for something else. But honestly, like if aliens were real, if somehow, some way, aliens were real, what are we gonna do? Like, what actually can we do? I mean, does it affect us for real? No, nah, not nah, unless they blow up the world or something. But that's not gonna happen. Yeah, because they don't exist. Exactly. But, but you know what? I don't know. I feel like there's like again, if we're gonna go completely conspiracy theory, I feel like whenever they do this like alien stuff or like any type of like racial war or something, it's always a distraction from like what's really going on. And we're not gonna talk about it, but there's war and stuff going around the world that's actually going to like affect the timeline and the economy and all that stuff. And it's just a distraction, in my opinion. But if we're going to try to explain the alien stuff, I feel like aliens are really just like a cop out for like physical manifestations of demonic forces. That's my take on it. When people th think they see like aliens and stuff, I really do believe like that's like demon and stuff thoughts ever heard that theory i have heard the th theory and that's like the only thing, logical thing that can make sense to me yep <laughs> all right um that's alien gabby thoughts on aliens yeah i'm telling you right now <laughs> no i know this past i know you don't want to talk about it but i just want to take a side note okay the lady who said that on the plane, I really believe that she <laughs> I really believe that she saw something on that plane. And I've never been like I've I'm always I've always been a conspiracy theory guy, right? But I've never like been a believer of like the shape shifting lizard people stuff. The Zarconians, draconians. Yeah, like, like I've never like really been into that theory. But thinking about aliens in the perspective of demons. We know that angels can take on the appearance of men and True. people, right? So how come demons can't do the same thing? So just a theory. I really think that lady could have saw some type of demonic presence, shapeshift or something on that plane. True. Too much fishiness <clears throat> in that story. About that, though, like that. the lady that like they said was her from the video did not look like this. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all, bro. They definitely either killed her or she was fake or something. Honestly, the lady <clears throat> looked like this actor I saw she? on this show called Parenthood. Mm. Like, she looked exactly like this. Like, I forget. I don't remember the names or anything, but I know she looked like an actor on this show called Parenthood. Wait, was it Parenthood? No, Empire. Empire. Mm. She was, uh... What was it? Andre's wife, the white wife, mm. before she died. That's who she looked like. Mm. 
I don't know what you guys are talking about with this plane yeah, thing. You haven't seen that? No. Nah, don't pull it up. That's too much. Wow. I mean, the moment passed anyway. Like, it's not trending anymore. But, but it was still like, oh. So yeah, some people were saying like she saw aliens or she saw like a ghost or something. I don't know. Even a ghost. I mean, I guess you could say. She could have seen that spirit. Some. I think she saw something. That's all I gotta say. Especially because they, the, she literally said in the the. Her allegedly, her said like, "Oh, I, I was told I can't speak on it right now." For what? If it was like, if nothing happened, then why are you not allowed to say anything? We should put that as a button. All right, enough of that, right? Yeah. True. So, uh, two trains. So, uh, can you? Talk about the the question that you asked us when we were in here the one time, and you were saying that uh, I've asked a lot of questions. I know, I know, but I'm I'm narrowing it down for you. I got you. When you were talking about the DMs, mm-hmm. I seen your girl, but man, so I how did I word it? The <clears throat> oh, what? Well, oh, how do you guys feel about well, like a f- a mutual f- friend acquaintance? Mm-hmm. A mutual right? friend acquaintance. A mutual friend acquaintance slides into a significant other's DMs. All right. My take is you should use discernment to try to gauge intentionality, the intentions. I'll add consistently. Consistently. Now, that's a big that's a big ad right there. All right. Can I just say my my part real quick? So that because I'm cutting it out. I would add on to that. Oh, man. You're cutting this out. <laughs> I'm cutting that out. <laughs> well, I'm adding on to that. I'll, maybe I'll believe. Okay. Sometimes they're just thirsty for, like, attention. Like, it's not always, like... You're horny, bro. You know? It's the same thing. <laughs> oh, I'm just saying, like, sometimes they really feel like they have to, like, comment on, talk to every single person that they're, like, friends with or whatever online. And it's, like, there's no boundaries for... Certain people you just don't need to have that kind of communication with, you know? No, but, but I would say, like like I said, you should have, like, discernment. You, like, as as the guy, you should have discernment on, like, what you think the intentions might be. Obviously, you can't read anybody's mind. So I feel like you can tell, like, after you see enough sample, like, you have a big enough sample, you'll be like, okay, um, I feel like the way that this guy's wording this is a little sketchy, you know? No. I would say if, and that's why it was a big uh, addition when you said consistently, because if it was like one time someone slid in the DMs and said, oh, like, I I like this post. I agree with this thing you put on or like, I love the shoes. Okay. One comment like that, like, I'm not about to freak out. But if you're consistently sliding up on my girl's DMs or if you're a girl and someone's consistently sliding on your guy's DMs, you're like, okay. Not that you're mad you're saying the other, but like, why is this person keep trying this like for what especially if you know them in real life yeah and then you gotta watch them in real life mm-hmm. no you don't okay why not i keep telling y'all it's all about you and your partner unless it's one of like your closest friends like this is what mm. i said last time true, true. if it was one of us then a conversation needs to be had or an adjustment needs to be made if it's someone who really don't have that much effect on your life and like you know your partner is solid and tactful in how they handle it when mm. it when it comes, mm. what do I need to what do I need to be doing? Like I'm I'm big on like preserving my energy unless I have to do something. You know? So for the situation we were talking about specifically I would have been like, bruh, look at me and look at you, fam. <laughs> like, well, like, do I really have to check uh, you on this? I don't. I think um, 
obviously like you're not about to be you're not about to be worried if you have a solid woman you're not you're not worried that like they're gonna do anything or whatever mm -hmm. i think i think the only thing that that i would be thinking about like having to like quote unquote check someone is if you just feel like they're like disrespecting you mm -hmm. more like the action like you're not literally like i'm not like affected by it because you're like i said like i'm not worried that you're about to really do anything mm -hmm. it's more the fact that you think that you have the access to like do this mm -hmm. yeah. like really the attempt like like it's like in sports like in basketball right if someone has Let the audacity <laughs> to sh try to at least just attempt to shoot over you like pull up on you you're like whoa the disrespect don't even try that at least like go to the rim or something like try like something different but like to attempt a disrespectful shot like that no. that's where i think like maybe you would quote unquote check somebody yeah. it, it depends on the context but there's definitely a time for that though mm. but all in all these be horny bro look listen to me <laughs> listen to me listen to me listen to me all right everybody lock in Go and look at some of your boys' Instagrams and look at who they following. That's big facts. I be people. I be people. These folks be leaving comments under people's pages they don't know, and I'm just like, you going out sad, pimping? <laughs> you going crazy right now? The hard eyes under the the fitness influencers, John, bro. I'll be like, dang, you know that I can see you. Four <laughs> K, four K. <4K. laughs> Tragic. Tragic. We need to add that button. Tragic. 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 But yeah, <laughs> like, so sometimes I I don't take it personally because it's like, oh, that individual just lacks self-control and they're just like double-minded, you know? So like, as a brother in Christ, we can have a separate conversation about that. Like, if you yeah. need help, for real. But like, in the scenario where it is like, intentional disrespect towards me as a man, then it'll be like, all right, hey, bro, what's good? Yeah. Nah. And it, especially, like, if it's, a, like, a mutual friend, acquaintance, especially if they're, like, you know, if you, if, if you have the relationship with them where, okay, maybe you're not, like, super close, but maybe they, like, look up to you or something. Like, they might not even, like... Like a younger man. <laughs> like, they might not even realize that what they're doing is, like, disrespectful. So you gotta just tell them, like, hey, I don't know what you think this is, bro, but... But it ain't. Yeah. <laughs> See, yeah. I understand. I understand that logic, but I don't even want them to think like it got under my skin. Hey, that. Oh, that's I, a good, I be on that, that bro. I be on that. If it don't matter to the point where I need to do something, and me and me and Shorty solid, then it's like I'm really not thinking about you that much. Like mm. it's just like when I peep it, I'm like, just I just right. see. Well, I can go right now. I can go. Pause. I'll go ahead. Is that John Ford? It stopped. What the red thing is around. Yeah, the red thing is not there anymore. Is it still recording? Did it just happen, Gabby? I don't know. Oh, she just noticed. Not again. Not really. I'll be back. Talking to me? No. No, let's talk about our play. Yeah, it's recording. Okay. Hey, let's do some NBA takes. Because I don't think... Does Matt watch NBA? <laughs> Um, Matt, do you watch NBA? Okay, let's talk about some NBA takes. Right. Uh, Cavs, let me know. Go Cavs. So, obviously, the Hornets are going to be number 12 in the East, obviously. No, honestly, I'll, if I'm giving them the, the highest ranking they're going to get is like 9. No way, bro. Maybe maybe 10. They'll, you, they'll, they you might make the can't name 9 teams better than... I'm not doing this again. You can't. I'm not doing it. We've again. been through this. You can't. I'm not doing it again. But I mean, they they going through a lot of off the court stuff right now. I just saw something else. They just waved the player, but he's trash anyways. But they just apparently another Miles Bridges, the one that was had the domestic case. Yeah. Apparently, he just got arrested like oh. literally like two hours ago. So Dang. season might be over before it even starts. Yeah. So. It never see. started. Look, look, look. Lamelo to the Lakers. All right, all right. But uh, let's talk about Dame to the Bucks. Okay. How does that alter the East, or is Drew Holiday to the Celtics a bigger move in the East? Hmm. 
I think Boston got more secure because not they didn't just gain Holiday, they also gained Porzingis. Very it's true. A huge move. I think Boston got stronger. I think Milwaukee, like, you know, just because they're star power, they might be they might be cool. But Boston is like deep. They have a deep team now. I really think that Boston's about to be the team in the East to beat, honestly. I think like they'll probably be Boston, Milwaukee. Cavs for real. Oh my god. I'm serious. Oh my I'm serious. Goodness. Like what other East team? Then Miami? I don't believe in Miami this year. I'm just putting them in order of who I think is the best. Then probably New York, Philadelphia, and then that's my takes. It's my top I, team in the East. I don't I, now that you not now that you're saying all this what happened? You look so cool with the red lights. Bro. Talking now, about NBA takes right now. <laughs> now that you say that, Cavs, Cavs probably top four. They're mm-hmm. literally top three. I literally said it's gonna be Boston, Milwaukee, then Cavs. I don't know. Really, Cavs really could be two. I don't. I don't think anyone's gonna be better than Boston because of they have a, an, an elite deep team. Milwaukee deep, has star though? power. I don't know if they're deep. I mean, they have like talent in every position. I mean, maybe not. They have a great starting five. They do, they do. And maybe like a great starting five in, well, the Cavs, honestly. Oh, my. Great starting five. (laughs) Honestly, no, I'm serious, though. I feel like Boston probably has the best starting five in the league. I think think the only thing they lost from last year that really could have helped them. Was um, Marcus Smart. Losing Marcus Smart is a huge is piece huge. to lose. But they also gained Porzingis and Drew Holiday. So I feel like that's, that's pretty that's a pretty good acquisition. And they lost Robert Williams. Ah, yeah. true. So it's true. I just I don't What's know. Up? I feel like the East is very top heavy. So like from four down is really up for grabs. That's why I'm confident the Hornets can make a run. But besides, but the East is kind of easy to predict because it will be either Milwaukee, Boston. Come on, it'll be one of the, it'll Cavs. be one it'll be one of those teams Cavs. in the finals. Cavs can make the finals. No, they will not. Yes, they can. No, they will not. They can. They could. They won't. Okay. But well, uh, listen, what about if, you, boy? Yeah, talk about I understand problems. my team has problems, but I have problems. Has problems. I have delu- delusional faith that they could get to the playoffs. All right, anyways, the West. I was gonna say, is that what that means? Because I'll be hearing that, and I just assume that's what that means. Okay, dope. I'm old, man. The West. The West is deep. The West is super deep. Mm. They got <laughs> reigning champs. <laughs> they got the Suns. They got the Lakers. Uh, I'm not sold on the Lakers. The Lakers, the Lakers have to stay healthy and they have to be good from the start of the season. That's every team, though. No, 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 but no, no, no. But especially, specifically with the Lakers, they have to start the season hot because the last couple of seasons they have like been bad and they had to like catch up to to be better by the end of the season. If they start good and like remain consistent throughout the year, I feel like they'll be good. But yeah, but they if if they're in the playoffs and they're somewhat healthy. Mainly AD and LeBron. If they're healthy, they will make a run at the championship. Um, you got the Kings, who I think will still be a great team. I was right about that last year. Mm. Um, I believe Timberwolves, if Cat and Rudy Gobert can play together mm. with Anthony Rudy Edwards. Gobert, bro, got, he's like two years away from being bounced out of the league. I would say, I would say his, I would say he has a vet minimum, vet minimum. After this contract, and then he's done. And then, and then, then, Anyway, <laughs> what other teams? Are in the um, West? Also, let's not forget the Golden State Warriors. Another yeah. solid team Golden that I think State. got better. They, they, they did something. I don't know if they're better. I don't know if they're worse, but they're definitely. I feel like changed. I feel like adding Chris Paul adds some like depth to your playmaking. It depends on how they use them, like. Him starting, I don't think it yeah, can I don't, work. I don't think that's he got to come off the bench and just basically let the bench unit be his own team. And then... Yeah. Plus, I didn't watch their preseason game, so I don't know, like... Because I know he started and they won, and so... 
I mean, they were saying that Clay Thompson was going to guard power forwards if he was to, if Chris Paul was to like play with them. Mm. But who else? Is, Grizzlies when Jaws back. Yeah, Grizzlies are a, gr- the Grizzlies were a solid team even without him. So I feel so, like I feel like they'd be team. good. Um, it's really like top six, seven teams. Yeah, I mean, let's not forget if if healthy, the Clippers, they got a good roster. That's true. So but they I, could I get they could get James change. Harden too at some point this season. I don't. James but, Harden has nothing. But Harden low key washed, high key, however yeah. you want to see it. Yeah, and and unfortunately with him, it's not even like his play that's as bad. Like it's really his attitude. Like he's just like it's, he's just like toxic. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right, last take. Who wins the finals this year? Super Bucks. Well, you know me. Super Let him know. Cavs. Super Cavs. <laughs> but somehow in alternate dimension, the Cavs didn't win. I'd probably pick Boston. I'd probably pick them too this year. Either Boston. I think it'll be, I think the league wants it to be Boston versus Lakers. And I think Boston beats the Lakers. You know, just a call back to LeBron when he was in with the Cavs and he was being up these young Boston Celtics. Now they're they're high key vets, even though they're young still. And they're facing LeBron again at his twenty one years in this league with the Lakers. It is the Boston Celtics rivalry again. I mean, there's so many narratives though that the league would love. Like yeah. if Golden State won another dynasty for gold you know, another dynasty cementing win for Golden State. Chris Paul would get his first and only ring, you know. If, <laughs> if, what? Well, I mean, but that would be a great like first story for him, a great narrative. I mean, if the Bucks won, Dame Lillard, obviously they can market the heck out of that. That'd be great. If the Lakers won, LeBron would finally have his. How many does he have? What it? What is he has fifth? four? So this would be his fifth if he gets to win. Yeah, so like that would be a great send off for him honestly in his 21st season I mean he ain't gonna he ain't gonna retire until he I'm plays not saying with retire, but like the, that'll be like his last like overall like after he beat the the scoring title you know he won another championship in his 21st year like that would be really impressive you know like I just feel like there's so many good narratives like around the league I do too but I think the Celtics Lakers rivalry just bringing that back mm-hmm. I think the league will love that one the most so if it is scripted I'm not surprised if that happens does anyone here watch Winning Time? Oh, love no. it. Fire sign. You know, it, it's canceled. They Is never it? Knew, yeah, they're done. What? They're, I don't know why. It was one of the best shows I've seen in my lifetime. Because oh, that's the, crazy. I didn't know that. The The way it was shot, the the scenes, Fire. like just like the the accuracy of how the actors looked and like you could just feel like yeah that's exactly what happened that's a great show uh, you know what probably happened that boy that plays magic was probably getting into his character too much that's why it got canceled <laughs> oh, no i seen a picture of him no let me not snitch <laughs> easy shout out to magic y'all ever been to a magic johnson theater no no i only knew theater. about those because of the proud family that's the only reason that's the only way i knew about them that boy, Wizard Kelly. <laughs> did they ever show Wizard Kelly in the show? Ever? Like, did they ever show his face? I don't like, think so. I don't think so. If they did, they only did it once. Oh. Great show. Winning Time and Proud Time. Oh, speaking of which. The movie's great. The Proud Time. movie. Oh, My yeah. name is Kavio. I love the peanut uh, <laughs> guys. And the dance, I always the dance those, battle. I always use those to roast people. They're my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I was going to say, so... The Proud Family made like a a reboot or not a reboot, but like another season. I don't know. Some, it's a they, reboot. It's the Prouder kinda, Family. Kinda, I didn't yeah, watch it. Was it. Some, so I watched like the first like two episodes or whatever. It was awful. Yeah, I assume so. Awful. I skipped that one. It was all the Disney wokeness to trying to like brainwash folks and all these different woke beliefs. Like it, Dude. it just wasn't like <laughs> it just wasn't like pure like the original was. Like the original one just felt like a real like genuine family. Bro. This yeah. one was just like. Woke nonsense. It was just terrible. But also, how come Hollywood cannot make anything original anymore? Everything is just like a reboot, a sequel. And you know, I love my franchises and everything, but there's no originality. Hey, Winning Time was, I mean, not original because it's based off a true story. No, but, but that's that's an original. It's original. Winning Time is 
fire. So bro. good. I missed the last however many episodes because I took my TV out of my room like a month ago. But everything, like, there was no bad episodes, though. I'm saying. All fire. I highly recommend to anyone that's a basketball fan, just a fan of cinema. Yeah, cinematography is crazy on really? that joint, bro. I should watch it. It's on HBO. Yeah. yeah. Great show. Great right. show. Viewer discretion is advised for you oh, yeah, young facts. folks. No, that's ironic that you don't watch it though, because like the cinematography is great. Yeah. Basketball is like. Yeah, I definitely remember seeing trailers yeah. and stuff. I just and it's I was definitely like, oh, up your alley, and I never watched it. I should. And they, the way they ended it, they like made it feel like it was a series finale because I guess they f- they knew they weren't going to get renewed for a new season, so it's like it's still worth the whole watch. Wait, so all the episodes are out? Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. Wait, I have to go to watch them. Do you remember when the last new episode came out? Mm, maybe like a month ago. Ooh, so I probably only have like two episodes left. Then. What's the last thing you saw? I don't even. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. it's real life events. I don't know the story of that in that much detail. Yeah, he wasn't there. Yeah. <laughs> All I know is the Lakers. You know, the Wake- Johnson played basketball. He had sex with lots of women. He got AIDS allegedly, and then well, not allegedly, he got AIDS. You know, or HIV. Then, and then he got the same cure thing? and tucked it away. Yeah. That's, all, that's pretty much all I know. I mean. See, the only thing is, I thought they were going to go through the whole thing because in the very beginning of the show, they had this, like, they, like, started it with the, they didn't show the press conference, but, like, when Magic basically said, yeah, I have AIDS. But he didn't, like, say any of that. Like, you just knew that's where it started. And then they went back in time to start the beginning of the show. Cool. So, Dame. I don't know anything about this situation. I didn't know there was like all this personal stuff going on. Dame? Yeah. Dame Lillard. Lillard? Yeah. Oh, his wife? Yeah, I don't know about this. Like I just know they got divorced. Or they're oh. getting a divorce. That's really oh, it. Oh, there's no like story there. I thought I was just saying Dame like to the Bucks. Oh, you said something about the wife, so I thought it's gonna be like a romantic, like a relationship story. Nah, I, I guess I guess they're just getting divorced. Oh. We that's don't all, know that's them. all I know as well. Yeah, we don't know them, so Yeah. That's what it, yeah. Yeah. Let's speak about someone else's situation. Uh, <laughs> Jada Smith. Yes, Jada Pinkett Smith. Apparently, she said in an interview that her and Will Smith have not been together since 2016. They've been separated this whole time, but not divorced on paper. First off, why not just get divorced? Second off, why does he slap Chris Rock and call it Keep Your Name? Or keep my wife's name out of your mouth. Like, why why go through that if she's already sleeping around on you? Because you're separated. Man. Yeah, I don't know enough details about the story other than what you just said. And some other things here and there. But the amount of emotional and mental charades that, from my perspective, this woman put Will through, it's tragic. She's still in love with Tupac. It's it's really tragic. Like, <laughs> he really did all of them, like, all that stuff for a show for nothing. They weren't even really together, like, and blasted his name through the media, hurt himself, went through all this emotional turmoil. It's just really sad. Mm-hmm. And I feel bad for him. It's, I feel like he's a victim in this situation. Have you guys seen a scary movie? I don't like... What is... Is that a horror movie? No, it's a a comedy comedy? movie. Oh, then, no. (laughs) Uh, So, uh, there's a scene where this woman has sexual relations with, like, a ghost, so she's, like... Uh, No, people do that, though, for real. Yeah. Yeah, whenever you yawn. What? (laughs) What? (laughs) What? What did you just say? I beg your pardon. Y'all never heard that? (laughs) (laughs) I couldn't do that. So always stay up the internet. Yeah, man. Because I've never heard of that. But basically, there's a scene and this woman's having sexual relations with a ghost. So, like, no one's there, but she's, like, up in the air and stuff. If someone had commented under the video, this must be Jada with Tupac. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, she's bugged out, bro. She's bugged out. <laughs> She's bugged out. 
No, because she really be bringing up on all these <laughs> narratives with her behavior, but it's like, bruh, come on, dog. Mm-hmm. Like, you could just do nothing, but she always got to do something. You got to watch out for folks like that, bro. It can't, it it's can't. always hers. Will Smith ain't saying yeah, nothing about it. Nothing. You can't cuff nobody like that, bro. They always just got to do something, bro. Just sit down. Where's that clip that I'll be sending? Hold on. What group chat was that? All of them. I've seen it in all. No, but real talk, like, even if she were to do stuff, like, at least leave him out of it. You have to stop, yo. Keep talking. Huh? You keep uh, talking, man. <laughs> huh? Because the next thing you don't know. Because the next thing huh? you don't know. Simple as that. You just keep talking. Huh? Shout out to that old guy. That's a great meme. I love it when you put that in the group chat. You keep talking, man. Yeah, that's just sad. I feel bad for him. Use and abuse like that. Nah, I don't feel sad for him. Free will. I do. It's Will Smith. Fire. He can just, yo. Huh? He good. He good, he? bro. Oh, like, let's get into that conversation. Yeah, is he? Because I, he seems like the guy. And again, I don't know him personally. If he wants to come on the podcast, I mean, shoot. But he seems like the guy who likes to be liked by people. Mm-hmm. He likes attention. He likes just being that nice, lovable guy. I feel like that's like his persona. So he seems like the person who would put on a smile and a, a fake smile to hide the pain that he's really going through. Like I really feel like that woman puts him through the most just bad feelings that he's probably ever felt in his life. And he's just like acting like he's all fine and like, oh, I'm cool, ha ha, ha laugh through it. But he's probably really hurting. Maybe. Not the conversation I was trying to have. Oh, or he's moving like Magic Johnson in the 80s. Huh? Nah, bro. Wait, wait, what do you say? I did, I he Will that. Smith. I be thinking about that, too. Like, he may be, even if they have an open relationship, he may be just know how to pick them better. You know? Like the ones that ain't going to be talking. <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> we don't ever hear from them. But NBA, she, she NBA's, messed with, she messed with little August Alcina, however many years younger than her. And then he running around the internet telling everybody. It's like, you brought this kid into our household and caused all this mess. At least Will knows how to, if, if he is getting into, you know, dirty business, at least he knows how to keep it under wraps. Keep the respect mm. there. Yeah. If that's the agreement they have. Mm. which It's more, yeah, that's weird. That's weird to begin like with. That. But anyway. Swing like that. I got you. Shout out to that person. <laughs> anyway. Um, it's more the what I feel bad about. What did you look Shout like? out who? No, I said I know someone who's like, who has that Wait, situation. What? Oh. Yeah, in real life. Like, you would I think like, it, it's party. funny, like, we talk about it here, but when you know someone personally, like, oh, that's how y'all get down. Huh. Anyway. But I was saying that not I me. feel bad for the, <laughs> Huh? I said, not me. <laughs> Gabe was looking at me. Like, no, me. no. Anyway, <laughs> it's more the, what I feel bad about is the public shame that, and the public attention that she put. <laughs> yeah, come on. That she put him through. Because like you said, Matt, like, like he at least knows how to keep it under wraps if he's doing it. He don't put her through he that thing, Like, bro. he never puts her under fire. But her, it's always making him look bad. Exactly. And it sucks. I think it makes herself look bad, me personally. It just makes Will look but like you're smart, more of a victim. Yeah, he probably feels like it too, though. Uh, the conversation I wanted to have, let me tell you. Because Gabe was like, he's Will Smith, he's all right. Oftentimes, celebrities or wealthy people be like, man, I wish I could just have a normal life. I would give it all away. And then we see that, we'd be like... Fam, shut up, because we need what you got, right? Do you think if wealthy people, rich, famous people, if they had the opportunity to, to, like, trade it all away, to, like, go back to a normal life, you think they would do it? Nah. Some. Example? Um, I just think, like, people who, people, let me get my phrasing right. 
I think there's probably people, I don't have like names, examples, but I think this proves the point. There's people who probably had lots of opportunity in that world. Probably maybe like maybe child actors or something, mm-hmm. people who like had lots of opportunity for money and stuff. And then they just didn't want to go through with it <laughs> because they realized what it could lead to. You know. And you know other like actors and stuff who stay low key, you know? There's just I don't know. I feel like there's the examples we can't name because they're not in the public. But yeah. See, I say no to like. I doubt Drake would just trade the life he has now for like just regular nine to five. I doubt like the the people you say their names like most people know know who that person is. Like that, like a child star that was on a TV show ten years ago and hasn't been on one since. I'm sure they're like already back to where they were like Damn. nine to five. So it's like McDonald's. So you're saying like people who like are in the public eye right now that are would like they give it up names in the public eye. Um. Well, yeah. Names. I mean, like Drake. I mean, again, it's hard to Drake. say because we don't know these people in real life, right? Well, let me tell you, like a couple. I think it was a couple months ago. Bow Wow had came out. He was like, "Man, y'all don't be understanding. I wish I could just have a life like y'all's and whatnot." And he was a child actor, so like he's been famous since he was like. How old? Like five. Five. You say five or alive? Five. Oh, five. Yeah. Hmm. So it was like he never really had a chance to have what we would call a normal life. Hmm. So do you think genuinely if he had the opportunity to that he would like want that? I don't know him. True. I don't, I actually don't know who he is. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You don't know who Bow Wow is? Didn't, oh, yeah, he was the one that said he didn't see you like Mike, right? Oh, my yeah. goodness. That was you? Trey, you got to see like Mike. Bad, that's kind of crazy. Yeah. But I would, I would say for, I don't know, but I think most would be like they would keep the financials, but give away all the fame. See, that's the part. You can't yeah, do you that. Yeah, you have to give away all of it. Yeah. No, but there's certain people like like Drake. Like he seems like he, and again, we don't know because we don't know like mm-hmm. how he is in his heart or whatever. But he seems like the type who like enjoys that lifestyle. He enjoys like the fame and all that stuff. And honestly, we don't really know that much about his real personal life. For real. It's not like all his business is out there like that. So, but yeah, the ability to actually, I can say this. Um, one time last season, I was talking with. And this I don't do this often. This was like a one time thing. But I was talking with Darius Garland and Isaac Okoro. So anyway, Isaac Okoro and Darius Garland um at a game, right? And we were talking and stuff, and I was basically asking them, like, so how does it feel knowing that we're literally all three of us are like the same age and we all live like completely different lives? Like you like you can't just pull up to Giant Eagle and shop for groceries. And then Isaac Coral's like, well, I can. I mean, and yeah. I was like, yeah, but you're Isaac Okoro, and this is Darius Garland, right? Yeah. Like, if he goes in a store, like, people are going to know who he is right off the jump, and they're going to want autographs and going to want to blah, 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 blah. And it's just going to be, like, annoying. But, like, me, nobody knows who I am. I can just do whatever I want. Isaac hey, Coral. don't you have a podcast? Yeah. But, like, but, but you know, what I'm saying is, like, like, when Darius was talking, like, he was, like, really, he seemed like he was really, like, annoyed by it like it's cool and all that people know who i am it's cool having money and stuff but like not being able to go do simple stuff without being like having my space invaded is annoying and he's not even like a super superstar imagine if you're like lebron kevin durant like people who like everybody really knows who aren't even basketball fans like that's probably crazy but i didn't ask them like would you give it up obviously not you know (laughs) but i feel like being a athlete is like a way different Thing than being like actor, I feel oh, like actors sure. are more well known. So, but I, I to like to your question. Oh no, who asked that? Who asked? Uh, would you give it up? Me. Yeah, I think it depends on like what that person values. Like, I feel like more older celebrities who've been in it long and stuff, and now they have like families or like tried to start families that didn't work or something. Like, I feel like those people actually would probably give up, give it up because they want like. Once you know, when you start getting older, like you value different things. Like True. you're not, you don't care about fame and money and stuff as much as you do like your family or like your relationships and stuff. So I feel like they probably would give it up. But young folks probably not. 
I concur. I feel like fame is like the most overrated concept in the world. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I'd rather just have the juice, you know? Yeah. I think we've talked about this like before. Like, it's cool, like, to like have wealth and stuff. Like, obviously, who would turn down having money and infrastructure? But like, but like, most folks, they just want money to be comfortable and to do what they want. Like, not every not everybody wants, you know, money on a level of, like, I'm going to get my own helicopter, my own plane, and, like, do all this other stuff. Not that it would be bad to have that or that some people might want. I'm just saying, like, most people will probably just be cool with just, like, being comfortable, you know? So, me personally, I would hate to be famous. That would be terrible. You will be. Tough. No thanks. Better turn back now. Yeah, honestly, forget the podcast. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm kidding. We no, but honest, yeah. What yeah. do you think? I was gonna say we can't go anywhere without someone being, "Hey, you're yeah. DP, yeah, DeAndre." You know. Yeah, but that's less about like fame. That's more just like I know a lot of people. Yeah. I don't think that's like fame because it's not like fame. it's not like people are like, "Oh, I've seen you online. I've never seen them before." Like yeah. I actually know them. It's just like you know. But it would be it would be tough, like, and then but this is why like YouTube fame, internet fame is way different than like Hollywood level fame. Because when this podcast has thousands and thousands of subscribers, we are still gonna be able to go to Target and shop. Yeah. Like nobody's gonna like recognize our faces like that. And even like top tier uh, YouTubers like Mr. Beast or whatever. Mr. Beast can probably walk into us. I don't know about Mr. Beast. Listen, exactly. Look, Mr. Beast can the walk into with the mustache. Yeah, that really knows it now. Right? <laughs> yeah, he, My can, mom. <laughs> he can walk into Walmart and like you might have like a couple kids or like teenagers who might notice him. Be like, oh my gosh, is that Mr. Beast? But like most folks, he's not gonna have a line of people surrounding him, you know, like how LeBron James would. Or like some famous actor, like That's Will true. Smith, you know, like everybody like can recognize them, but not YouTubers or something. There's a different level of fame. Tears. Yeah. That was it. Y'all talked about horror movies and haunted houses. Oh no, I forgot. I hate horror movies. Same. I do too. I told y'all the only time I watch horror movies. With a John, what happened? Is is it dead? It just died though. Mm. We'll have to He's move me. that one back and forth. Right. Oh, I got it. Yeah, that's you. Yeah, but yeah, the only time. That was gonna text you. Just you can turn it. Okay, <laughs> the only time. I watch horror movies just with a John, you know, because they be, they be weird, bro. I'm not gonna lie, women like horror movies way more than men do, for sure. Biggest mm-hmm. facts. I do not. I am not all women though, but I hate them. I'm scared. I just am not interested. Yeah. My little sisters, shout out to them. <laughs> it's, it's their 17th birthday. Uh. They like watch like those like TV shows with like murder mysteries and stuff like that, and they always want to watch horror movies and stuff like that. And I just don't understand why people in general want to watch stuff like that. It makes no sense to me, like the horror <laughs> aspect of it. It's, re- <laughs> it's because they, <laughs> I'm dead. I'm sorry. It's because they're sick and twisted. I don't know what it is. Like, people like a thrill, you know? I feel like it's the same thing with roller coasters, just on a different level. Because, like, people want that excitement to, like, just make them, like, jump and, you know, be excited about something. But people like different brands of excitement. Me, the scariness is not an enjoyable brand for me personally. Mm -hmm. I was going to say that. You know, I feel like a a murder mystery or like a thriller like that, like that's fine. 
I think it's weird when you start getting to like the demonic yeah. witchcraft stuff. Because like all demonic, it's I've, all I've seen some good like murder mysteries. I've seen some good like thrillers. Like those are cool because it still gives you like that thrill of like, oh, what's gonna happen next? Like that's fine. It's just like when you start having all the witches and like the s- demons and all. Like I just feel like, what's the point? Like why do you want to fill your mind with that stuff? If you don't believe that's real, then that's one thing. But if you do, like. I just don't get it. I don't know why you want that. Not that not that like I'd be scared of it, like it's just a movie. But at the same time it's like I just don't want to fill my mind with that stuff. So. so what about like do you like Harry Potter? Y'all know how we feel about Harry Potter on this platform. <laughs> Bro, you know it's what all I'm crooked. Gonna, I'm gonna handle this. How do you get this off? Oh, okay. Hey, don't break my joint, I man. Know. You uh I got it. This is nuts. <laughs> yeah, if, if the GoFundMe is still up, if anybody wants to, you feel me? Yeah. Please yeah. like, comment, and subscribe no, as well. No, 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 no. The GoFundMe <laughs> is still up, if anybody wants to give. Oh, and we got to sell that cash app. <laughs> hey, by um, the time this episode comes out, we're going to have that cash app set up. Boy, I don't get sick. <laughs> I don't get sick. Yo, where's my water? Where's my water? Found it. What were we talking about? Do y'all mind if I use that camera on Saturday? I had no idea it was there. What? What are you talking about? Wait, are you talking about? Oh, you talking about that camera? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You? Yeah, I'm not gonna use it. Actually, I have a problem with it. Okay. Might need to take my monitor. I don't mind. Okay. So annoying. And it's really just on it. True. Eventually, once we have these funds from the GoFundMe. I'm just going to buy another one yeah. for the studio so I can actually use it then. True. Were we supposed to introduce ourselves this episode? It doesn't matter. Okay, because we didn't. No, I know. They know who we are. I Hi, I'm Gabe. No, we don't have to do the outro either. No, we do. Is this, is this episode over? No, wait. I'm what trying else? to think of anything else on uh, horror movies on top of that. I don't know. I I've only oh, ever Harry seen Potter. one. Loser. I've never seen Harry Potter. So nerd. Not. Okay, I'm sorry. I can't call anybody a nerd because I love like comic books and stuff. But... You still can. I've seen the first one back when I was like a freshman. Harry Potter. I saw the very first one. That's the one I saw. I don't. (laughs) That's crazy. I don't get it. Forty-seven years ago, which done put a spell on me. But you don't know that. Like I liked, I I liked Hocus Pocus as a kid. I never saw none of them with. Yeah, I Wait, wasn't allowed Have you seen to. Hoodwink, though? That's not a witchcraft movie. Hoodwink oh. is so... You gotta watch it. When oh, you're the on the mountain, there's lots to Those be Those are like feet. animals in my movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It's like Red red, yeah. uh, red Riding Hood, but it's like different. Oh, yeah. But it's fire. Yeah. That's kind of like a murder mystery. Kind of. Mm-hmm. Fire. Big recommendation. I feel like this is really lively with the, the movement. That's really cool. I saw that movement back then. <laughs> I've seen, <laughs> <laughs> seen that. I've seen it. Y'all should know. All right. No. He's an old dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, what's all that movement back there? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, this is what we were talking about, though. What? We've been wanting to do this. Yeah, the movie. Yeah. I feel like it looks cool. Yeah. So eventually we gotta get Julie to come over here and just do the for free. I just, uh, what? Tadre. Oh I did the uh the super crop. Him? Super crop no. Hmm? What'd you say? I said all oh, Dre. Oh I thought you said DeAndre. I was like, you don't say that. Oh I just caught something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> for what? No, I thought he said. <laughs> what? You got, did you catch it? Yeah, <laughs> came. It's a, it's a idiot, dog. Said. Yeah, I missed it. <laughs> Nothing to catch. It's crazy too. What was that? That's a Jay Z ad lib. That's a Jay Z ad lib. 
as Chris that would say. That was crazy. Christopher, are you... That's what Chris would say. Oh, I thought you were going to say Hey, yo, dog, we got a fight? Yeah. What did you say? What did you say? What did he say? Oh, not Wing Wong. Not Wing Wong. No, Chris thinks everybody who makes any type of like animal noises or animal anything is like a, a furry or something. He says there's furries in his school. I'm like, bro, why do you, why do you care so much? Wait. What is that? You don't know. You I'm ever heard of a furry? They're like people that like they think they're animals. Identify as animals. Are you and serious? They're like, and they're like sexually attracted to like people who are animals. No, I was doing this. <laughs> Jay Z. But um, what are we doing? How 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 you guys' lives been? <laughs> it's eleven fifteen. No, I, honestly, what? I just yawned. <laughs> 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 the the guy. Is. <laughs> <It's done that. laughs> you know, I actually identify as a ghost. So. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you caught it. Oh, I got it. Hey yo. Pause. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> this gotta go. Ah, oh, the trailer. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, man. Anyway. So that's what you're doing. <laughs> Is that how your lives have been? Oh no. What features? What, 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 what did what did future say? Like it's doing right. Oh man! All right, quick recap on my life to like to close off the episode. <coughs> so uh, honestly, I've been cool. I've been doing way less freelance work to try to prioritize my time. Been uh, trying to be more intentional with the relationships with the students and just. Be more intentional to prayer time and prep time and devotional time and, you know, trying to be a man of God because that's when I feel like I thrive, when I'm in his word, praying, just staying focused on the right things. Mm-hmm. So that's been great. Work's been cool. I'm dead. Work's been cool. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's been pretty chill. Season starts. First preseason game at home is tomorrow, so excited. Um, so, yeah. Pretty cool. How about you? Hmm? Yeah. Since we were laughing. <laughs> um, nursing school. Nursing work. That's pretty much everything. Keeps me busy. But it's really not that bad. Like I thought it was, like people say nursing school is like so bad and horrible and maybe there are bad programs. Maybe... Mine is just easy. I don't know. Not it's not easy. Not easy. But it's like they say you can't have a life and be in nursing school. But like I definitely make time for other people. So it's doable. Indubitable. Uh I feel like I kinda got into like a a rut and like Cause I'm very schedule oriented. Like I like to lay out how my days are gonna be, and then follow a system for my priorities to get accomplished. But like for like the past month, I just been off. I'm not gonna lie, cause I've been trying to readjust and find different ways to do stuff, and like how to incorporate new things I'm involved in. But like this week, particularly the past two days. Been doing really good. Been figuring things out. So I feel like I'm about to be in a really good space. Right now, it's a little rocky. But you know what? God is still good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. good. Yeah. So I really only have issues when I forget that. And I'm like, oh, because I woke up at this time, I don't have time to pressing to his presence and whatnot, so now I got to get all this other stuff done. And that's when you have a bad day, you know. So like I've said before, you got to set yourself up at the beginning of the day 
for the rest of the day to be successful. And that begins with pressing in with God. So these past two days, I feel like I've done a really good job at remembering that, getting back on track with it. And hopefully it'll continue to be that way. For me, <clears throat> I feel like I've been really consistent for like the last like two and a half months. And I just want to keep that going, going into the winter months. And that's like my main focus right now, just being consistent in all areas. Work, doing stuff here with the podcast, doing stuff over there with the youth group, doing stuff in there with the worship team. Like just being consistent with all of it. I think I've been solid with that. And then going to the gym with you guys. Oh, yeah. I probably won't be able to go to the gym with you guys. Tomorrow? That, uh, no, like... Period? Yeah, like... <laughs> I'm actually breaking up. No, that's a part of, like... <laughs> no. what, that's a part of what I was trying to say, like, with my specific system and, like, the, what works for my, like, well-being. Like, these night gym sessions, it's been all right, but it's, like... Not going to the gym in the morning affects mm. the rest of my day. Mm. So, like, I went to the gym in the morning yesterday and today, and I felt fantastic. So, like, that's, like, one thing that I, like, I know for a fact is more beneficial for me. Not to say I won't ever go with you guys mm. again, but it's just, like, I just have to lock in on what I know. Like, we always say, you have to know yourself and what works for you. So, yeah. like, that's one thing that, you know. Sorry. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> This kitchen's not the same. <laughs> All right. Well, Is that game? Yeah. Take us home. <laughs> well, this has been. I love the, <laughs> game. Be like. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. This has been the Mutual Friend Podcast. That's nuts, bro. Oh, wait. Come on. Song suggestion. That's true. That's all I was thinking of. Hey, what were you thinking of? Hey, yo. The mutual friend. No, that's why I said it. But song suggestion is a good point. But you got to have that energy. Oh, that's not what I was thinking. But but song suggestion. Fire. CC. Is it Winans or? Like I think it's Winans. It's Winans. I Wynans. always pronounce it wrong. Like, they whole family. They whole family makes great music, by the way. But by CC, Winans. Fire. I love that song. That song is crazy. I'm not just going to go in circles about how amazing it is. Just take my word for it. Go listen to it. song is fire. And whenever I'm in a mode of like feeling like I'm not locking in with God the way I should be, and I'm not as passionate, or like I'm getting off track in my schedule and whatnot, and I need to like reignite my passion, I feel like that song is one of the ones I always go to because it's like about starting anew, you know? Like reignition is literally like because it's fire. You see what I'm saying? It's perfect. You see? So that's my song suggestion. Please go listen for yourself. Mine is I got a few I could share. But Kirk Franklin just dropped an album, Father's Day. It's it's pretty good. I had to give it a listen. Uh, my song suggestion is actually from that album. Hmm. It's called Again, and it's with Tori Kelly. Great song. Uh, yeah. Chandler Moore, I think Jonathan McReynolds is on there. There's a lot of great, like, it's literally like the most elite Christian vocalists that exist. They're all on that song. It sounds great. I haven't heard Tori Kelly's song in so long. She makes Christian music now? I know she was not, like not really. a She kind of made her artist. own album. I didn't like, listen to it. She was young. Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, like, gospel artist. I don't know if she was a gospel artist, but she, like, came up in church and stuff, like most singers usually do. Good move. I forgot. Did they tell you to do the talks? But yeah, no, you should. Huh? What? <clears throat> what? You look real cool, bro. You look like you're about to rap about spaghetti. You don't get it. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't like him. <laughs> but go ahead. But no, that's my song suggestion. See? Wow. You were about to say something. What? Oh, was I? 
Her or me? You. Uh, yeah, most elite Christian artists, or not artists, but vocalists That's were all on there. Yeah. yeah. It, like, it sounds great. It sounds great. And honestly, like, my dad was listening to it. I was like, Dad, so when you listen to Kirk Franklin, he's a big jazz guy. So I was like, this is not your thing. But he was listening to the album, and I was not impressed, like, as <laughs> I was going through it. But then that song hit, I was like, ooh. <laughs> you did what? Is that my people <laughs> on here? So then I had downloaded it. It was good. My dad's a big jazz, jazz guy, too. I've only I've heard, like, a couple of stuff. I'm not super familiar with it, but I've always liked playing it because it's very... What's the word? It's groovy. improv Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So. Mm. All right, well. Song Joseph? Okay. You ruined his momentum. My bad. All right, well. This has been the Mutual Friend Podcast. Oh. I am Gabe. You ruined his momentum. He was going. The clap didn't even sound the same the second time. This one's going to be the best. It was about to be the greatest outro probably ever. <laughs> My name is Gabe. Bro, come on. <laughs> My name is Gabe. So, so what else? <laughs> no, Gabe, you got it. <laughs> it you got it. <laughs> Let's wrap it up No, now. you got it. Oh, my. I don't want it. I already <laughs> passed the ball. Oh, I'm passing shit. it back. <laughs> Would y'all? Oh, my Jesus, man. Really Fine, switch to me. Only me. No, you do it. Fine. Welcome. Oh, wait. <laughs> hey. Welcome. Holy shit. Oh, you are welcome. <clears throat> and this has been the Mutual Friend Podcast. I am Gabe. I'm Matt. And I'm Dre. I'm Gabby. Bass. 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 Bass.